Hey everybody, what's going on? Ruben, Texas, All Water Fishing, and today I want to talk to you about catching redfish. Dang, that was a big old red. <laughs> There's another one. He scared everybody. There we go. Bring it to here. Look at that muddy burrow. Muddy girl. Yeah. Time on the water is very important when you are targeting any type of fish. It's important to know how they are feeding and biting during certain seasons and their reaction or their activity during tide changes as well. And it's also extremely important to know the lay of the land or, or our instance or what is going on under the water surface. So extremely important when you are targeting any type of fish is to know what they want and what's going to trigger that fish's bite. So in this instance, what's going to trigger a redfish or a red drum's bite? Redfish, like most fish, will feed primarily on three senses, sight, sound, and scent. So I'm going to talk to you about those three things and also where are you going to target redfish? What are some of the great ambush points or what I consider hot zones where you're going to find and target some redfish? Redfish are some of the most fun best fighting inshore fish that we have to offer in the salt water. Uh, they haven't been easy to net, that's for sure right here. Oh, 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 get your line, get your line. There you go. Uh-uh, he, he don't want to. I, I, I suspect he's probably gonna run a couple more times away from this kayak. The great ambush points that I look for redfish is grass lines. They love to cruise along that grass lines, feeding and chasing bait. Also oyster reefs. You know, oyster reefs provide a safe haven a lot for a lot of bait fish. So you will always find redfish in and around those oyster reefs. As well as drop-offs, deep holes coming off the shallow into a deeper hole or in the bends if you are going into some of the more skinnier water when you're looking for them and chasing them in the marsh a lot of those bends have a deeper channels and drop off points along with the mud they are down there rooting around they might be looking for crab they might be just chasing some bait that's down there they might be digging around and bellying down trying to get into some of that warmth of the mud depending on what type of season it is if it's one of the colder times of the year you will find a lot of redfish rooting around down in that muddy bottom as well as grass flats again the bait fish the those bait shrimp they're going to run and seek refuge in some of those places that they can hide including the grass flats and you will find and catch some redfish in those locations as well so let's talk about scent redfish are really driven by scent especially when you're in those muddy and darkier waters that scent is really gonna hone them in to go explore and may even get a good reaction strike out of them if they're not feeding aggressively 
Now there is all kind of different lures and baits out there on the market that have a built-in scent but you can also add the scent to your lures as much as you would like through products like Procure and also Texas Rattler they offer a nice great scent on the market and some of the other markets such as a bite and fight angler they offer a oil based scent that I know I use all the time a garlic scent now scent like I said scent is extremely important when you want to draw them when you want to draw the redfish redfish in it's also great to use in some of those times where they're just not biting as aggressively as you would like or simply short biting how you present your lure to the fish really matters. There's all different types of lures out there on the market like this Voodoo Mambo Mullet. That will give you great water movement by the way that they are designed and developed moving in that water. There's a lot of realistic baits out there as well that give you good water movement. Some lures have a nice drawn out tail to also give you that great water movement when you're moving to get a reaction strike out of the fish, out of the reds. Now another thing is well, you also want to make sure you match the hatch. If you're having, if you see a lot of shad and flashy baits like that, flashy bait fish in the water, then it might be a good idea to look at and use a spoon. Like I said, maybe something with a little more flash to match the hatch. If you're seeing a lot of shrimp, then obviously use a shrimp. Or you can simply use or you can simply use a lure that has that nice shrimp color. Or perhaps they're feeding out of crab. That's a good time to switch on to a purple or a blue hint hue color. If it's a fresh hatch, a lot of times you'll have the fresh hatches of shad or even glass minnow and that's when I like to throw on some of these micro spoons. Just to simply really, if they're feeding on that, if it's a mullet that they're feeding on or if there's shrimp that they're feeding on, then I will try to match the hatch as best as possible, but not just the color or the type but also the size. If they're feeding on finger mullets, if they're feeding on something much larger than that, it, like I said, if they're feeding on, like I said, if they're feeding on something smaller, you just wanna match the hatch. It is extremely important to match the hat and change that lure up. Also, reds are very attractive to, through sound and vibration in the water. Now, there is a lot of different lures that will, by the way that they're designed, that will put out off the great vibration the vibration of the tail and there's also a lot of things that you can do to add more sound to your lures another one thing is by using a chatterweight chatterweights are also always great to use i typically look to like to put a chatterweight about 10 to 12 inches away from my lure on the leader line this is a texas rattler jake head and it, it rattles it has it has a little bit of chatter in there different lures on the market with again that nice little rattle sound and the top water lures also give a nice very good nice rattle sound and and again that's off also including off site if you see reds that are blowing up on the surface well then that's a good time to throw a top water Texas Rattler also offers some spoons with a rattle built inside. Inger Bait Voodoo Shrimp, they have rattles in them as well. And also using corks also will give off that nice rattle and splash on the surface that may trigger a redfish bite. Redfish have lateral lines on them where they can sense and feel that vibration throughout their body. So sound is a great way to trigger using sound is a great way to trigger a redfish bite all right so how do you work these lures how do you work and use the scent the sound the visual 
the visual all in your benefit all right so one of the ways that i work allure when i am fishing for redfish is pretty simple i just do a straight retrieve keep in mind that most of these lures most of these swim baits are designed to do just that so a lot of times I will do a straight retrieve. Typically I try to slow down my retrieve and a lot of times I will drag it on bottom trying to get that redfish out of that muddy that muddy bottom. Now if they are now if they are biting more on top and you see that top water getting hit a lot, then it's always a good idea like I said before to throw a top water. One of my favorite ways to catch a redfish or to look for a redfish is by using a cork i like woody corks but there's nothing wrong with there's a lot of different other corks on the market but my favorite is the woody cork now to me what this does is this just simply rings that dinner bell telling the redfish hey knocking on their front door and saying hey come come get a bite there's something over here so whether i pique their interest because they're hungry or i get a reaction strike i always like to throw and pop the cork and typically I like to pair the cork up with a voodoo shrimp. I know you guys have seen me using a voodoo shrimp quite a lot, but that's because they are so effective and they are so durable. I think I've had this shrimp for well into like two to, two to three months and um, it's getting a little bit of wear and tear on it, but it's still in very good shape. These are also a couple of my go-to lures when I am targeting and looking for redfish. Again, they have that nice tail, that good water movement, that good vibration. Also, I like to use the bite and fight anglers. They have a haymaker and they have a jawbreaker. And again, this vibration of the tail and in the water movement and the way you present this. This lure to the redfish, he really gets a good reaction out of them. Again, whether they're feeding or simply reaction strike, I, it tends to really, they tend to really latch on and able to set that hook and hook up. Another great lure that I like to use is this is this My Coast Outdoors. It's a knock and tell lure. It does have a rattle that's built built into the tail and it offers a great sound when it is moving and traveling through that water. It's going to be shaking nonstop. But I also like to pair it with a Texas rattle jig head because these jig heads do have a rattle in them. That tail has a rattle in them. So it just kicks out and puts out an extra nice sound to it. Well, I hope this information helps you next time you are on the water and you are out there trying to target some redfish. Like I said, sight, sound, and scent, three great things, three things that reds look to and really trigger their appetite and really trigger them to take a bite out of what you're presenting to them and offering them. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time, hopefully you catch me hooking up. Thanks.